Hey, what's up? If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, where I show you how to save money and make more money, all while bettering yourself every single day. Now, these tips I'm about to get into are about to show you how to get cold with your money. If you don't know what that means, I want you to listen very closely because if you do, this will be the only video you'll ever need on personal finance. The first three steps I just went over a couple of videos ago are the baseline for how to get good with your money. And if you didn't get a chance to check that out, I'll give you a quick recap. In that video, I'll talk about going over these three steps, understanding exactly where you are with your money, how to set financial goals, and then setting out a plan to achieve those financial goals. Like I said, I have a full video that covers all three of those topics in full detail, and I'll link it up if you want to check it out after this video. So anyway, those first three steps are going to constantly be on repeat, like they will become part of how you think. So while you're doing those three things that I just got finished talking about, you're also gonna layer this extremely important step on top of that, and that's living frugally. I've created a whole playlist on the basics of frugal living, and I'm even in the middle of creating a redefined, more advanced version of that playlist for frugal living, because in my opinion, there's two sides of frugal living, and I'm about to break both of those down for you right now. As you hit your goals, make more money and save a certain amount of money it's extremely important for you to understand that you're still only a few mistakes away from going right back to where you were before you started improving when i say frugal living i don't mean clipping coupons spending hours finding the best deal or even thrift shopping not that there's anything wrong with those things it's just not what i personally mean when i say frugal living when i say frugal living i'm talking about being intentional with your money and living below your means so for example you're going to hit your goals. Especially just by listening and applying what you learned, you will absolutely hit your financial goals. You'll make more money and you'll save more. And what'll happen is over time, you'll realize that you actually have way more options than you did before. And it'll make it very easy for you to look at the lifestyles of other people around you. And honestly, it'll make you feel a way about your lifestyle. You over here being frugal, they over here eating brunch, pinkies up and everything, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna inevitably feel like you're missing out on something. And that's why it's so important to keep your emotions in check. Because the excitement, the need to fit in, and the feeling you get when you feel like you're just sacrificing too much can all make you resent all the good habits you've been building and make you give in to the biggest financial mistake ever giving in to lifestyle creep and i have an entire video on that you can check it out after this if you want to but i just want to give you some quick advice on this real quick spending more money just because you're making more money now is only going to hold you back in the future the smart thing to do is to keep your expenses the same even though you're making more money when it comes to frugal living the name of the game is keeping expenses as low as possible and without getting too deep into this what lifestyle creep does is it takes step number two which is getting crystal clear on your goals and it erases it which wipes away any clarity you have around your own goal to the point that you start to question your goals and you essentially end up going right back to the life that you've been trying to escape from all because it's comfortable and lifestyle creep is so dangerous because it comes in way more forms than just money it also comes in the form of time i lie to you not while i was coming up with this video topic idea and thinking about what i was going to say there were people outside laughing having a good old time jumping in the pool it's warm outside on a friday afternoon talking about some geronimo splash you know what i'm saying i could have been like man let me join them real quick and see what they're out there hollering about but I'm on a mission. I have a message to put out there for my audience because I really think this type of information in this video can really help somebody out. And I need to jot these ideas down that I have in my mind right now because if I just stop and go out there and start swimming, I might forget what's on my mind right now. I don't know about you, but I'm the type of person that when I have a really good idea in my head, it, it goes away if I don't write it down like that second. That's just, that's how I am. It's kind of like when you have a crazy dream and you wake up and you forget it within seconds. That's how my good ideas go in my brain. They're in and they're out, just like that. It's just like this, bro. We have to think about the purpose for what we do. Back when I used to schedule myself to work overtime at my last job, I couldn't just not show up just because my friends decided to hit me up because they wanted to hang out. Sure, it might have been tempting at times, but what was the point of the overtime? You see, I did it for a reason. In that case, it was for more money to achieve one of my financial goals. And my thought was, my friends will be there when I get back. I'm making this video for a reason. The pool will be there once I'm done. And that's the next step right there, thinking long term about your money. And this is my favorite part of this video right here because this is where I'm about to straight up give you the game. Thinking long term is all about timing. So when it comes to your career, you've got to have a mental time clock that's constantly ticking. And that could be the time frame that you're going to ask for a raise, a time frame that you're going to go for a promotion, or it could be the time frame you plan on staying there while you figure out what you really want to do. I Man, I wish somebody would have told me about this because I would have started thinking about these things before I even started my career. 
So once I caught wind of this, I was like, okay, by the end of this year, I want to make this much money. And by the end of year five, I want to be making six figures. And I set these goals and milestones for myself so I could make sure that I was on track. Not on track for what everyone else was doing, but on track for what I was wanting to do for myself. Here's the part that absolutely no one considers, and I'll be the first to tell you, I didn't consider this at first. Actually stay loyal to the time frame that you give yourself, you know what I mean? You might say to yourself, okay, I'm gonna give myself two years working here so I can build up my resume and prove that I have the experience and skills to qualify for a better job. At a better company that pays more that also gives me more of a work-life balance, which happens to be what my case was. But it just so happened that within that time frame I gave myself, that was the exact time frame that I went through the most hellacious experience I've ever had in my entire life. I've had my bad days. I went home questioning my life, feeling like a complete failure. And there were so many times where I just wanted to walk out of work, give my boss some choice words, and just never come back to work ever again. But if I did those things, I wouldn't have been thinking long term, now would I? Instead, I pretty much would have been in a position where I had to recover and basically hope to God that another company would take me in. And that's exactly why they say there's no better time to look for a job than when you already have a job because then you're more relaxed, you're more confident. If you don't get the job, oh well, you already have a job anyways, you know what I'm saying? So your life doesn't change. On the other hand, if you choose not to have your emotions in check and you decide to storm off just because you had a bad day, you could be facing the exact same reality that a ton of adults are facing today, and that's money gaps and job hopping. And in my opinion, neither of those are good. We have to have some consistency about ourselves. So I'll tell you what I think is the best way to handle this situation. And by the way, this is the crazy story I was talking about a couple videos ago. I hated my first job. And that's something I say all the time, but knowing that I didn't just up and leave even though I really wanted to. I told myself that I would stay there at least a year and a half so I could build up my resume because I knew pretty much after then I could go anywhere I wanted to. And the plan was throughout that time I would be looking into other places. It was the timing because something else opened up and I got a way better job, but that process took a couple of months. So while all of that was going on, I was still working a job that I hated. Why? Because I ain't missing no paychecks for nobody. I'm sorry. But you want to know the crazy part of this story? When the pandemic hit the entire world last year, the last company that I was at completely shut everything down and everybody got laid off. Every single person, no pay, no nothing. But the company I'm at now, even though they did shut down for a couple of weeks, they made sure everybody got paid. Every single person. And guess who got the benefit from that? Me. I moved within the perfect timing so that I wouldn't have to go through any of that mess with my last company. So in addition to thinking long-term about my career and persevering through that horrible experience, I also thought long-term about my money because throughout that horrible experience, I was saving and putting money away just in case something happened. And in doing those two things, it made sure that I was covered. But the blessing in all of this was the fact that I dodged a bullet because I still could have been there during the pandemic, which meant I would have had to shell out money that I've spent years saving looking sick. Speaking of long term, I can't forget about retirement accounts. Make sure you set up one with your job as soon as possible. And usually they're called 401ks, but check in with your HR department because it could be different for a different company. But whatever retirement account your job sets you up with, just know that the earlier you start, the better. Just putting a little bit of your paycheck into your retirement account now can lead to you having hundreds of thousands of dollars, even millions of dollars saved and invested in the future. And by the way, this should be one of the first things you do when you get started. And if your job doesn't offer a 401k, a 403b, or something of that sort, getting a Roth IRA is a really good idea. Quick disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. I'm not out here trying to get sued or nothing like that. I'm just here to give you all the good things that I wish I knew about money a few years ago. And before I get to this next step, which I think is going to be the most important thing you walk away with, I would like to present you with a challenge. Long term is more than just money, retirement, career. It's also about your relationship with those things and your career. So I would challenge you to build relationships within your career so you could build that network of people that you're always going to want to keep. That way you can get coached and mentored within your career so you can possibly grow, get promoted, and make more money in the future. Or you never know, you might run into somebody who knows somebody who's a millionaire who can mentor you into just growing outside of work. And I've been blessed to have both of those opportunities, so I'm speaking from straight experience right now. I've done it. I've even coached and mentored people and I've watched them grow and get promoted within their careers and watched them make more money and just build a brighter future for themselves and their families. It's really awesome to see. It's just something that I do on and off camera, help people make and save more money. And it's really cool because it's a result of them seeking that knowledge in the first place. 
When it comes to your relationship with money, it's also important to look at your credit score and figure out how to improve it. I have videos on that too, but that's thinking long term because that can affect the amount of options you have in the future. I have videos on that too, but that's thinking long term because that can affect the amount of options you have in the future. And eventually you can learn how to leverage your credit card to make yourself more money and even get free stuff. But anyways, here's some gold here, bro. You ready for this? Create another stream of income and it doesn't need to be wild or groundbreaking or anything. For me, this is literally what I did. I put up a post on Craigslist one day showing people that I used to play on the drum line at my university. And I basically told the parents like, hey, I can show your kids how to make it on the drum line in high school and in college. They flocked to that. So that was a very easy $200 extra a month that I was making just off of doing that. It was super easy to set up, costing me nothing. Now that extra income wasn't life changing by any means, but it was $200 more a month worth of options that I got. That's the way I saw it. And because the extra $200 gives me more options, that means I can put it towards any financial goals that I set for myself. And you can do the same thing even if you don't have a talent like playing the drums because you can pretty much have any skill and make extra money off of doing that. I know this lady from my old job, she used to cook some really good food. I'm talking season to perfection. You know what I'm talking about? And she would bring plates to work and charge like three times what the original price was that she just paid at the grocery store. And everybody wanted some of that, everybody did. So everybody was paying an arm and a leg for that good food. You know, some people drive Uber or Lyft and all I'm saying is this, it's never been easier to make money and I think we should all exercise our ability to do that because that money can add up over time and it can become very lucrative for you. I also made three separate videos on that. They're called side hustle videos and I actually made them into a playlist because they're all very different. I'll have that video linked for you so you can check it out after this video because I really want you to understand different ways you can make money. You can really get creative with this stuff. And it's actually really cool because in one of them I actually interview a CEO. But always remember to diversify your income because relying on just one stream of income can actually really hurt you. And I think all the events that took place last year proved that statement to be true. Now this one is actually really cool. Or maybe it's just cool to me because I'm a nerd. But check this out. Learn every single day. Learn about financial literacy, building better habits, running a business, or just anything that creates value. This simple habit has made me so much money, it's ridiculous. And the reason why is because one, it changes your mindset by opening your mind to the possibilities unlocked by other people telling their stories. I know that was a really long sentence. And two, it gives you more value to add to people because the more you learn, the more you grow. The more you grow, the more value you add. And the more value you add, the more you increase your earning potential. And I do this in the easiest way possible. Every day when I'm driving to work, I put on a podcast. And I'll key you in on what podcast I'm listening to right now. And that's Earn Your Leisure, Bigger Pockets, Smart Passive Income, and Work Less, Earn More. And that's in no particular order, but those are really cool podcasts. And I'd recommend anybody to check those out. I think it's really cool to hear people in a similar space as me talk about business, money, and success. Because that's where I find passion in life. But here's the thing about that. There's tons of books and podcasts on anything. So always learning and staying up to date on your passions is going to make you smarter within your passion. Whether it's filmmaking, art, photography, personal growth, or money. So those are just some free resources that have made me more profitable over the years. And when you do listen to a book or a podcast, what you're doing is you're investing your time. But I also want you to think about it this way. If you listen to a book or a podcast while you're doing something else, you're doing much more than just investing your time. You're straight up making the most out of your time. So if you're cooking while listening, driving while listening, or cleaning while listening, you're making the most out of that time because you're getting two things done at once. Facts. Speaking of investing, that's another way to get really good with money. I've invested tens of thousands of dollars on myself, and that's outside of college, and it has proven to pay off a lot. So I've bought courses, read books, went to business events, spent time with mentors, I've hired a coach, and I've spent a ton of time watching YouTube videos. These are all investments, and when it comes to investing in yourself, the best thing I can tell you is this. Whatever you're interested in or passionate about that you know for a fact you want to improve in and make money doing, that's the thing to invest in. For me, that was growing on YouTube, learning how to build a brand, and learning how to build a business. For you, it could be anything. And something I recently got into investing is in the stock market. And I've always kind of invested here and there in the stock market, but I really got serious about it this year. So every day when I wake up, I spend a good 30 minutes to an hour just learning the stock market and learning what good investments are and learning what the best practices are for individual stock investing. And I'm no expert by any means, but I've been putting thousands into the stock market and I'm extremely confident with all my investment decisions. And it's because I've been doing the proper research and every investment that I've made has performed extremely well. 
and it's because I've been doing the proper research and my investments have been doing very well over time. So the last step is keep leveling up and that's reinvesting the extra money that you make. And I actually have a video coming out soon showing you guys exactly how I'm reinvesting the money that I'm making on the side. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna give you some quick examples. So extra income I make from work, like say bonuses and whatnot, I'll put back into my YouTube channel for better equipment. Like for example, this camera right here. I'll also use some of that extra money and put it in the stock market. And the good news is I've made money in both of those. And now what I'm about to do is take some of my earnings from YouTube and use them towards my business expenses, which you know we'll talk about in another video. And as I continue to upgrade everything that I do, the editing software, I might even hire an editor or something like that down the road so I can buy more time to create more content for you guys. I can invest in better lighting, stuff like that. Cause I usually record at night. I don't know if you can tell, but I usually record at night. So I like to have more than just one light that's like right here, you know what I mean? Those are examples of reinvesting. And the whole point of reinvesting is to see a return on your investment over and over and over again and seeing that growth, you know what I mean? And I will definitely see a return on my investment. But as you improve and make more money and start to invest your money, always think about how you can be stepping your game up along the way, because it starts with discipline but it ends with consistency. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this video. I'll see you in the next one. Stay cold.